Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 13 of the Good People, Bad Intentions podcast. And today, as our guest, we will have none other than Brandon Brewer, somebody who's been kind of built up with this podcast. I mean, remember, episode one, we had Aubrey McLeod, somebody who worked with uh, with Brandon as far as being a coach and talked a little bit about his backstory. And then later, we had one of his teammates, Sean Finnegan from Ormocto Boxing, now training at Crandall University. Um, and of course, we just had John Olhauser on as our previous guest. So there's been a strong buildup for uh, Brandon Brewer, the, the Lumberjack, L-Jack. Um, he's somebody that if you talk about boxing in the Maritimes, oftentimes comes up. Uh, he's kind of done it all. He's been obviously a fighter, a boxer, um, he's been promoting. He had his L Jack promotions that a lot of people uh, in the pro scene in, in the Maritimes have fought on, um, including the likes of Ryan Ruzicki. And then um, we also have the fact that he's expanded beyond just uh, his boxing and promotion. He's now uh, a co owner at the, the Coach Lab training. And then uh, he's also a realtor. So. I'd like to talk to him, kind of touch on some of the stuff that Aubrey had brought up in my podcast with Aubrey, get his own reaction and, uh, you know, get the story and the scoop about his upcoming fight against Antonio Napolitano. Um, that this will be an upcoming fight in March. So I will also be following up on that. And lastly, we'll be trying to extract whatever tidbits and knowledge he has and, and maybe also we can get a little bit of of the secrets to his hard work ethic which i think a lot of us could benefit from so without further ado i'd like to introduce my guest brandon brewer thank you so much for coming on brandon i really yeah. appreciate it man yeah, thanks for having me on i appreciate it, it welcome to good people bad intentions my first guest that i had on was aubrey mcleod and naturally like you came up in the conversation um, cause we were like kind of going back, we were reflecting on Riziki and, and the, the Bridger weight title that he went after. And then kind of the fact that, you know, I know you train with, with Riziki and you actually were with a promoter and, and the main event for, for some of his beginning fights, right. As a pro. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, uh, actually, Ryan. Right. Ryan's here uh, training with me right now. He's okay. over, over here watching boxing. So, oh, awesome. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, first, I don't know, the first three, I think we we helped out with. Uh, he fought on a couple up here in Fredericton, and then we co-promoted uh, his debut down in uh, Sydney Cape Breton. And uh, that was, you know, the beginning of, uh, of his climb. So, uh, yeah. And then Aubrey, Aubrey kind of touched a couple of the bases because I was, I was, you know, whenever I, everywhere as I go in Atlantic Canada, when we talk about pro boxers, Brandon Brewer is one of the first names you hear. Like you have a, a presence around here that I don't think a lot of other boxers have. Like a lot of people know about the lumberjack and the, and the plaid and, you know, yeah. and you, you've, You've promoted your own fights. You've been on the zone. You've been, uh, you know, you've had had cards that have had MMA fights on them, right? Uh, yeah, it's been, uh, you know, I've been I've been truly blessed my entire career. Uh, one thing about me is I, I've 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 touched a lot of, uh, I guess, groups as far as like uh, I've been to university. I was in the military. I was in the coverage union. I've you know, I've kind of, I've, I've done a lot of things and, and I've been blessed to meet a lot of people and, and, and gain a lot of supporters, uh, along the way. And, uh, you know, so once I started promoting, I, I was supported, right. I, I mean, I was supported before I started promoting, but, uh, once I did start promoting and the reason why I did was it was, uh, just kind of an opportunity. I had a couple, you know, positives. One, it was an opportunity to kind of uh, create a life for myself after mm -hmm. boxing, um, create a brand and kind of put it in an industry that, uh, that I could, you know, make money off of 
uh, later in life because we can't box forever. But uh, at the same time, too, it was, uh, it was an opportunity to kind of give back to the sport and give other guys an opportunity to uh, um, let combat sports, boxing or MMA, uh, kind of have an effect on their life the way boxing has had an effect on my life. You know, it's a, it's a, I think it's the best sport in the world. Uh, and it can certainly uh, turn a boy into a man and, uh, and, and turn, uh, you know, somebody in a dark place and, and pull them into the light. So. And it, it kind of comes across like you're, you're kind of a self-starter. You're somebody that, that able to get things done because I think you also have done real estate, right? You've had like the, the lump, the L Jack uh, real estate, you've had promotions, you you've, you've, always jumped into things that you think you can do. And I think that's really awesome that, you know, you're not just a boxer, but you're also developing all these other skills and business opportunities. Well, I mean, uh, I, you know, I, I, like I said, I can't box forever, Mm -hmm. you know, and and I never wanted to be one of those fighters who had to take fights because they needed the money. Um, you know, I, you know, I, Floyd Mayweather said it once, he said, I'll retire from the sport. I won't let this sport retire me. And, uh, when you do, you, you know, as many faculties, you know, as you can, you want to be, uh, healthy and happy at the end of the career as best you can. And, and, uh, so that was kind of my, my mindset around it. Um, and, uh, I never got, like, I, I started boxing so late that, I, you know, I, I had done a lot of things prior to, and I never got that, I never got that degree. I never got that license or anything that, uh, you know, I could kind of hold on to, uh, when I was done training, I didn't want to go back to, to hammering things and, you know, uh, in the minus 40, my hands are sore. So, uh, that's why I grabbed the real estate and, uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been, it's been great. So after Aubrey, I had your friend Sean Finnegan on, and uh, I hope your opponent's not not listening here, your upcoming opponent, because he said he's got three hours of sparring footage of him kicking your ass. Sean has no footage of, uh, he might have footage, but definitely not of kicking my ass. <laughs> he was like, yeah, from ages 9 would, to 21. He said ages yeah, 9 yeah. to 20. He's got it all, like, he's got all the DVDs, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Saying. Hey, I watched it. I watched that podcast. Yeah, yeah. No a, he, you guys got quite the banter back and forth. Is it all? Is it all love, or is there some some potential matchups in the future? Nisha, I've been when Sean walked into the club when he was nine years old. I set up a room inside his head, and I've been living there for probably twelve years now. <laughs> Sean wants nothing to do with me. Uh, he knows it. I know. Everybody knows it. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I had to get him back. I heard what he said. So I uh, know, yeah, you know, yeah. Sean and I, uh, it's, it's all love. Sean's a, I mean, I say he's a good kid. He's, a, you know, he's a man now and he's, uh, you know, he's really uh, developing into a, uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a great guy, a really great guy, you know, on, on all, all levels um, in and out of the ring. And uh, yeah, no, it's all love. I like, I like Sean. He's, he's a, you know, a good friend and, uh, competitive, but, uh, you know, uh, that's one common thing we have. So it's good. Yeah. It's, it's good to be competitive. Cause if you're not, I mean, yeah, you, you could take the win. That's all right. I, I, I didn't need it. You know, you yeah. know, it's, um, yeah, it's game. yeah. And, uh, and I was, uh, like during that conversation, obviously he was, he was saying like how much he, he looked up to you. And it was kind of interesting too, because I believe around that time, did you guys both start around the same time, but just different ages? Yeah. 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 Right around the same time. Uh, yeah. He was nine and I was 24, I 23, 24 or something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I was, I it was sparring on my knees with him for uh, quite a few years, to be honest, probably right up until last year. Um, <laughs> no, uh, but uh, I think he's taller. He's he is taller than I am yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now. So he's uh yeah no he's Sean's a good good guy. He's a smart kid. He's a respectful kid. Uh, and uh, he's doing great things in the military, at uh, at Crandall, and uh, I mean he's 
picking up uh, track and field and winning gold medals nonstop. So uh, Sean's got a bright future in whatever he decides to do. So, so you mentioned that you were you were enlisted. Were you uh, like in an NCM role? Uh, I was in the reserves, one RMBI. Reserves. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, was that the sure. one that's by by Ormocto or same one, yeah, uh, same one that Sean Sean is in. Oh, sweet. Because yeah. like uh, the reason I, I kind of got in contact with Sean was there was a period in time when I thought I wanted to join the army. And like, I was like, wait a second. There's like this really cool boxing gym that's not too far from, you know, the base or whatever. And yeah. uh, and I was chatting with him, whatever. And I think it's like amazing that he's been able to not only compete, but he's been able to, you know, get into the to the reserves and have that as a potential and then now he's going into school at, at Crandall and, and be, being able to kind of enrich himself, be, be become more educated and, and, and work towards something as far as education. And then maybe that, that potential uh, Olympic gold in the, in the future. You never know. The sky is the limit for Sean. Like I said, yeah. he, whatever he chooses to do, uh, he, he's got the work ethic. He's had that from a young age. And uh, he's resilient. He's smart and he surrounds himself with good people. And that's, uh, that's really important. So when I had, when I had Aubrey on, uh, he touched uh, quite a bit about your backstory. I don't know if you had the chance to, to listen to watched his, it. you watched it. I watched and, it too, yeah. Okay. I don't know if there was anything where you're like, ah, that's, that's kind of not true, but no, honestly, no. the no. takeaway that I had was that you were willing to, to put in the work. You know, like you, it's not like something like you just decide, okay, you know, I want to, I want to box. And then the next week you, you change your mind. He said like something like you, you took six years and you never took really a day off. Like you, you'd have a fight on a Saturday and by Sunday you'd be running and then going to the gym on Sunday. Is this, is this true? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, I had it, I had it in my head that. I had to, the days that everybody else wouldn't have trained, I had to train. Because, I mean, Aubrey and I talked and, and you know, I, I did say, I remember, like, I, what do I have to do, you know, in order to, to really make a run at this? And uh, they just said, you have to outwork everybody. And so I did. You know, I did, and 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 I knew I was. You know, I knew I was. I I sacrificed everything. Like, I mean, I couldn't have put more into it. You know, and uh, it wasn't. You know, it it, it wasn't. Uh, I mean, it wasn't easy. But I mean, anything, any good thing worth going after isn't easy. And I enjoyed it, and uh, it was it was worth it. You know, it was. Uh, yeah, I mean. I, don't know, I always had to had had to know that I I had done something that day and trained trained that day and uh, yeah. And I gotta ask, were you were you a good shot, um, either from from your training in the army or because you had some some uh, peasants or whatnot at uh, one of these uh, abandoned houses that you had had stayed at uh, in your time when you were when you're developing <laughs> your career. That's one question I was wondering. I was like, man, this guy must have got pretty good with that pellet gun. Uh, yeah. Yeah, those <laughs> weasels, they kept me uh, tested. Um, because, I mean, yeah, when he was telling that whole story, I was just like, wow. Like, this guy really, he wanted it. He went after it. And he was willing to do whatever means possible to accomplish that. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, negative into a positive. You know, like I you look at the hardships i mean like that's those are what motivate people like people who grow up rich it's been proven that like in that third generation like they're not rich anymore they're poor because you know things were handed and it was easy you know but then the hardships the motivators you know that's that's what it is like when you feel like you don't have a whole lot and uh i have the win that's what i needed i that was what i went after i needed that win because i felt like i didn't have a whole lot at the time and that's uh yeah that's why i looked at it now moving moving towards recent times 
Um, I can't imagine that, you know, the, this upcoming fight, um, you originally were scheduled twice with Jesse Wilcox, and then now you have a new opponent. Has it been a really rough time the, the last year or so with all these, you know, changes, or have you been able to, to just look past it and, and continue working on your craft? Uh, it's, I mean, you know, like I, I've been in tougher times. I, and I mean, with what's going on in Canada and the world right now, I didn't like, I, I have a good life, you know, and there's been frustrations when, you know, a week out from the fight and you've done months of training, uh, definitely, you know, definitely frustrated. And then it happens twice. Uh, and then he pulls out, <laughs> It was kind of a kick in the teeth, but, uh, you know, I kind of expected Jesse to pull out, to be completely honest. Oh, fire. Well, I mean, like, I, I don't know. Prove me otherwise. Did you guys train, train with each other at all at TNT, or is he just part of the three lines, like, promotion no. itself? No, we, Jesse and I, we've met a few times, you know, like, mm -hmm. Jesse's, you know, he's, I don't have anything bad to say about him as far as a person. Um, uh, but no, we, uh, he trained in, in Hamilton at, okay. uh, yeah, at Steel, Steel Town, I think, Steel Town Box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cause, um, when I met you and I met Ryan and a few other people, uh, I was at the, the Valentine's Day massacre and I was cornering okay. with Adam. I had no idea, like, what i was doing at all yeah. i tripped and like my finger like bled and everything all over the bottle like and stuff. yeah adam adam never even got it got cut but when i gave him the water bottle it was full of blood my own blood <laughs> right so don't wear timberlands the lesson lesson uh, don't wear yeah. timberlands if you never wore them <laughs> to uh to corner and then yeah. i see i see uh um St uh stevie um mm. he's uh He's wearing like, you know, like a jogging suit and some trainers. I was like, that's what I should do. That's, that's what a pro does is, you know, wear that's something it. comfy that you can get. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Got to be able to go up and down them stairs pretty quick, but yeah, look, you're not the first one. I've seen many people fall. Many people. Yeah. I, felt, I felt really bad. And, I, and then I said to myself like, uh, oh, like nobody, nobody noticed it and then bridget my coach is like yeah i remember when you fell down that was really funny like we all laughed <laughs> i'm like no uh, bad enough that you know the video is not circulating around but i'm sure eventually you know when things come uh, up and when the podcast blows up it's people are gonna be like yeah this was uh, the buddy like he fell down and funny it's all good publicity for you but yeah i remember uh, i i met you and and um and i actually met met jesse um we were cutting weight with, with Adam and, and he's, and like you said, he's a really nice guy and stuff. And, and I, I was thinking to myself, like I, w I was surprised that the match happened. Now Aubrey said like with the fact that, you know, it's hard to get opponents from, uh, you know, other countries right now. Um, like I was thinking what, what three lines was often doing is they have like kind of their fighter and then they get somebody from another promotion to come in. Yeah. Are you surprised that, that, you were matched up against Jesse or did you think that that was going to happen? And then beyond that, do you think, did you think that your current opponent, did you expect to, to also go against him at some point? No, I never expected to fight, uh, Antonio. No, I haven't. I, I never did. No. Um, uh, as far as Jesse. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to fight him for a few years, to be honest. Um, I, I knew eventually it might happen. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, I mean, who knows? We might get in there uh, if he can kind of build up the courage. I don't know. Okay. And, uh, look, looking at your, your, your next opponent, funny enough, um, Adam, when I was with him, uh, we were actually looking at him for a fight against Adam. And I, I had done some, some research on the opponent and, he is, uh, you know, uh, somebody who doesn't have as many fights as you have, but he tends to, he tends to seem, seems to be more of like a power puncher, um, without, without giving your whole game plan. Cause I know you want to keep that, you know, for the fight, 
like what's your assessment of your your opponent like do you do you see do you see this as a good a fair matchup or do you see yourself as having way more experience i mean every every fight's fair i mean like he's got a yeah antonio he's a he's a good athlete you know he's an explosive uh, athlete uh, i think he's a strong kid um a uh, good puncher decent speed um but uh i'm fast and i'm a bigger puncher so i mean we can do it either way it doesn't matter i can box them i can box them or i can put the hurt on them and i'm probably going to do that so before before this fight i was watching some tape of you just to to get a sense are you a, are you an orthodox fighter um, or or are you a southpaw whatever gets the job done okay because i i saw your box rack and said orthodox i watched tape of you where you're a southpaw the whole entire fight um, well I, t- I tell you where it comes from i mean uh na- naturally i'm right-handed okay like I, I write with my right hand mm-hmm. um i before my first amateur fight i was always i was always boxing right-handed um but about two weeks before the fight i I broke my right thumb and I, I didn't like, I didn't want to pull out. Um, like it was, it was a fracture. It wasn't like a, but I mean, it's like, it's kind of, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of crooked and I can't yeah. really compare it to that one. Like I can't uh-huh. really bend it. Um, but, uh, I, so I, I had a fractured right thumb before my first amateur fight and I didn't want to pull out cause I was so excited. And, so instead of throwing the big right hand, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to use it as a jab and just throw the left hand. And uh, yeah, it worked. And I don't know, just the way my instincts kind of go in there, sometimes I'm right-handed, sometimes I'm left-handed. And I'll like kind of, you know, I'll cycle through. Sometimes it's pretty obvious what a guy can't deal with. And I'll mm-hmm. just stick with that. Sometimes you cycle through the right hand stuff and you'll remember what works and what doesn't. And you'll cycle through the left hand stuff and what works and what doesn't. And then you just kind of use that until they figure that out. And then you just flip to something else. So I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Works. Yeah. Cause I was like, man, like I was just looking. I was like, man, like I, I, I didn't want to get it wrong. I was like, I'm going to interview this guy. Like, uh, is he a soapaw? Is he orthodox? Cause I was like, there's a little bit of a discrepancy on the tape, but that's cool that you have that kind of natural ability to kind of see where the fight goes and, and what your opponent's feeling and stuff. Cause uh, you know, it makes it, makes it a really interesting and, and uh, unpredictable fight, right? You don't, they don't know what you're going to do. And yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. You gotta, you yeah. um, know, uh, kind of the next thing I want to touch on, cause I'm really curious about this. You are a co-owner of coach lab training correct i am yeah can you talk yes you got the lab (laughs) you're we're in the laboratory right now that's right (laughs) um can you just talk a little bit about kind of the beginnings of that and and really like what is it that you guys offer uh well um a good friend of mine uh ashley ward and and her husband uh wes they uh you know, had a property and uh, long story short, half the property wasn't being used. Uh, half the building wasn't being used. And uh, we said, hey, let's open a gym. And we had plans into a bigger, uh, uh, you know, a bigger plan as far as a wellness center and stuff like that. But uh, uh, phase one was kind of the fitness. And uh, so yeah, basically we opened a 24 hour uh, facility and people can uh, come in and train at our headquarters, but we also offer online programming so that uh, people can get an app on their phone where every exercise that's on the app has a a video tutorial in in case you don't um, know what the exercise is. But it also has an analytics, uh, like a database where you can input all your, your weights and stuff and it, once you're done your workout, it gives you all your feet, your analytic feedback saying you just lifted 10,000 pounds or 20,000 pounds with this many reps. 
and uh, you know, good job and whatnot. And we can kind of interact on the back end with the uh, with the uh, the members and uh, kind of give them some feedback if they don't, uh, you know, if if they have a, a bum knee or something, they don't want to do a certain workout. We can give them a modified uh, modified exercise. Um, but this the workouts are also designed to use, be able to modify to do with uh, minimal equipment. So you can do them at home um, or you can uh, use them at any gym, like any big, like Good Life, any any big box gym, any other gym. So it's basically like an online personal trainer that you can use anywhere from home or a gym. And uh, it's only a dollar a day. You know, oh, wow. A month. Yeah, so it's a... Uh, it's kind of kind of unique. I think I think the number one thing, uh, n- number one reason why a lot of people don't go to a gym is because they don't really know what to do, mm-hmm. and you know. But and then the number one reason why a lot of people don't get a personal trainer is because they cost like eighty dollars an hour. So if you can kind of fix both problems by guiding people on what to do at a cost efficient price then you kind of uh, you're pulling people off the couch who kind of who who don't want to be there but can't afford or don't have the knowledge on what to do when they get to the gym so, and i think i think this is also really important with all the uncertainty around the gym sometimes having that uh you know extra security no no i just got to keep my iphone i mean that's that's given power to everyone you know that they can Absolutely. just yeah personal right there yeah, yeah. And you have to pay extra for uh, L Jack to do the the demonstration of the rep, or is is uh, is there an yeah. appearance in a couple of them? Or no, there actually is. Actually, I do. I give some boxing tutorials. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they they can they can get some boxing tutorials uh, if they subscribe to the app. I'll drop it right now. Was it? Uh, I'm gonna give you the website just so we're on topic okay. here. Okay. Uh, what is it? The lab dot health. So I mean, yeah, yeah. the lab dot health. I like and, uh, I like the dot health. It's like yeah, absolutely. In case, I in mean, case you thought it was something else. Health. Well, physical health, uh, you know, and, yeah. and mental health, same thing. You know, we have to, especially in challenging times like today, everybody's locked up. At least they can get a work in at home. Yeah. Um, kind of taking a step back to what we were talking about earlier about the the earlier days because because i i talked to aubrey about this but it's one thing to talk to him but then to talk to you what kind of gave you this extreme work ethic and determination that seems to no matter what kind of goal you have you you keep going towards it was was it something like some people that you grew up with your family your friend some friends or um yeah, I mean, my like my dad and my stepdad uh, are both lumberjacks. Like, okay. uh, you know, and and no matter where I was, I was chopping wood. <laughs> um, and my my mom is just a one of the hardest working people I've ever met. And uh, everybody in my family, they're they're all just workers. I mean, we, you know, we're from Nakwick, home of the world's largest axe. Um, you know, so you don't, uh, you don't grow up in that type of environment, uh, without work ethic, you know, so. The yeah. world's big, there's the biggest ax in the world. Google NACWIC, N-A-C-K-A-W-I-C, uh, home of the world sergeant's ax, just type that in and you'll see it. Oh my I put goodness. That yeah, there you go. No wonder, because I was thinking to myself, like maybe like he watched one of those uh, Floyd Floyd Mayweather like Showtime workout things when he was just splitting the wood. That <laughs> I respect that, but Floyd, you come up and I'll show you how to swing that axe. Well, it was like I, I thought it was kind of funny because he was like getting him like brought to him like just to just to hit it. And I'm like, okay, you know, the concept Fair is I mean, it's, it is it's 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 good workout. <laughs> No, yeah, and I wasn't trying to take it away from that. I was just like, yeah, well, and, and I imagine with a lot of your lumberjacking and, and cutting, like it was probably, did you have a, a wood stove or did you have, like, did you have a help out with the business aspect of uh, cutting wood? 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, we, yeah, I mean, at, I grew up with my mom and my stepdad for the most part, and the we had wood stove there. Uh, and I was the guy to fill it and throw all the wood in. And, uh, you know, if I got in trouble at school, I had school suspension and to the woods I went. Um, so, and same thing when I went up to my dad's, uh, he had a, a portable sawmill, um, like a wood miser. So I was cutting up logs and, and uh, sawing lumber with him. Uh, or in the woods cutting firewood because we did my grandmother's and everybody in the family's firewood. So I couldn't get away from it. And one of the, one of the guests I had, uh, Reed Primo, the fighting farmer, up and coming talent from Nova Scotia, Oxford, Nova Scotia. Uh, he is, he's really into the, the wood as well. He talks about kind of the, uh, the discipline and the hard work that, goes into you know obviously like harvesting your own wood you know putting on new cover you know all that stuff that you said so so would you say that that to some extent you know being around the lumberjack business it kind of influenced that that work ethic it made you uh, stronger absolutely. yeah you don't you don't know it until because it's what you know you only assume that everybody else is growing up that way and you know, and then when you grow up and you get, I don't know, say in the gym, maybe like I, I don't know. I just, I was never afraid of work. In mm -hmm. fact, that like I, I kind of embraced it. The more you, I mean, you, you kind of hate it when you're younger, you know, because I mean, most kids don't like the work. You grow up that way and you just, you kind of, as you get older and you, you, you start working with other people and I've worked with some, some great people, but uh, you realize that, uh, I don't know. I just, I was just willing to go a little bit further and a little bit longer and a little bit harder than uh, some of the other guys around me, I guess. And, and uh, then you, you build strength off that. You realize you're like, okay, you build confidence off it. And uh, yeah. And I know you also worked in construction. Do any of like the tradesmen that you worked with, tradeswoman, tradesmen, tradeswomen mm -hmm. that yeah. you worked with in the past, do they still keep in touch with you or are they, like, uh, are they proud of you and what you've accomplished and what you've been able to, you know, do with boxing? I mean, it's it's kind of a mutual uh, respect because, I mean, like I I was just talking to a couple of my friends here last week. And, I mean, they've done great things with, you know, in, in the Carver's Union and, and other guys own their own businesses, building homes and uh, electricians. And I, it's mutual respect. But, yeah, I'm definitely staying in touch with, with a lot of them. Um, you know, a lot of them, uh, lifelong friends and, uh, you know, it's fun to catch up. I don't, I don't really, I guess nobody's going out and doing anything too much, too much fun there these days, but, uh, I do try to stay in touch as much as I can with them. And, uh, yeah, they've, they've been to all the local fights and, and some of the ones further away too. So it's, uh, it's fun. Um, going back to talking about, you know, L Jack promotions and stuff. Um, I'm just curious, like when you were promoting, um, a card, but also being like the main event, was that a, was it hard to focus on the fight itself? Like when you had all these different moving pieces that you also had to deal with and, and all that stuff, <sighs> like looking back, looking back, I don't know what I was doing. Like. Uh -huh. I honestly, I, I, I don't know. Like it was a matter of probably we did three, four, we did like seven shows, eight shows. And it was just like that. Cause as soon as one got done, it was on to the next one. And so it was, I don't know what happened. I don't know what I was doing. Like I would never do that again. That was the most like, honestly, I, I, all of a sudden after eight shows and, you know, a few years later, I, my body was burnt out mentally, emotionally, physically. I was just done, you know, and, and it served its purpose and there's certainly no regrets at all because everything happens the way it's supposed to. Um, but I wouldn't go back and do it again. Like I wouldn't do it again in the future because it was, yeah, I mean, you're, I, it's hard to focus. It was, yeah. Because, like, 
like uh and, and I don't know to what extent these people actually are part of their own promotions, but like it, it seems like the new um, status quo when it comes to boxing is you got somebody like Mayweather, somebody like MVP Jake Paul coming along, and yeah. now all of a sudden they don't want to, uh, you know, be in somebody else's promotion. They want to be their own. And yeah. I just think to myself, like, when your competition gets higher and higher, wouldn't you think that you want more of your, your brain or, you know, focused on, on just that, the task at hand? Cause I imagine like, you know, you the days leading up to the fights, like you're, you're not thinking about the fight at all. It was tough. It was yeah. tough to separate them. It really was. And, and like Mayweather and I, and I'm not to say that, uh, you know, they didn't do any work because I'm sure they did. And not to discredit my team because I had a fantastic team. Um, but the level, I had this image in my head of what the show was supposed to look like. And it wasn't a boxing event. It was just an event. And it was supposed to be Vegas style. And it was supposed to be the best. Because that was my opportunity and to prove to people that I wasn't just a boxer, that I was a businessman and I was a damn good one too. So that when I started business and created businesses after that, they were worth supporting because they were going to be a good business. Um, so my team, they didn't have that standard. Not to say that they didn't want perfection, but it was before they even tried to get it, I was demanding it, you know, and, and, and wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't willing to, like throw everything on them. You know, in fact, it was always them say, hey, let me help, let me help. Come on, like go train, you know, like focus on that. And and I had good people around me, I really did. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I get that fighters want to, you know, get a piece of the gate. That's what they want to do. They want to get a piece of the ticket sales at the promoter. And I can respect that, but I don't recommend being the lead runner on that, get a team behind you, a good one. So um, I had my second guest, Kyle, the real deal, McNeil, which I think he's fought on at least one of your cards, correct? I think so. Yeah, I think Kyle, I can't remember. We've had, but you, we he's in your rate, he's on your radar, or you, oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Okay. I've, I know Kyle really well. Yeah. Okay. Real yeah. deal promotions is something that he wants to start up. So yeah. if you were to give him like one piece of advice, like if he was listening right now, like what, what, what would you say? Just don't, uh, don't put too much on yourself and, and let your team. Uh, uh, I, I would say uh, create a system, create a system a long ways out and try to stick to that system, have it on paper and know who's doing what obviously, so that there's no stone unturned and, and, and nothing gets uh, missed. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, don't try to go too big or have to hop, you know, because too big means more moving parts. And I'll tell you one thing, you think of it like this. I always tried to have like 10 or 11 fights. You got 10, let's say 10 fights. Mm -hmm. That's 20 fighters that you got to deal with. That's two coaches usually per fighter. So that's 40 coaches, 20 fighters, 40 coaches, okay, that you got to deal with, flights, hotels, whatever. But then these fighters all have to get their doctors. Every one of them's got probably got a different doctor. So now you got 20 fighters trying to go, and they had to get, see two doctors because you have to have your medical, your physical exam, but you also have to get like an ophthalmologist or optometrist, sorry, optometrist for your eyes. And so that's two doctors per fighter. So that's also 40 doctors you have to deal with. And there's so many moving parts that the smaller, start small, six, seven fights, aim for eight, one or two will fall out. They have six, start at a small venue, so your bills aren't, you know, super high and you're not stressing about uh, sales and whatnot. You want to keep your overhead as low as you possibly can and, uh, and start, you know, have tickets on sale 10 to 12 weeks out. 
that's my advice. I think he really appreciate. I'm gonna I'm gonna send this to him. And be like, here, here you go, because um, this is. I know this is something he really wants to do, and it seems like with every card he's a part of, uh, he's the that one that sells crazy. so many tables, and he's mm-hmm. he's so personable about it. I mean, you see him taking pictures, he's shaking the guy's hand, thanks for the support. He's always putting it out there, and I'm like, man, like th- this promoting thing, it might be a good angle for him. I, I think Kyle. I mean, of all. Uh... You know, I know a lot of fighters, and I think Kyle will be one of the best promoters, 100%. I think his challenge would be taking on too much himself because he's a work, he's a hard worker, and uh, but uh, he can do it. I know he, I know he can do it. He's a good ticket seller, and like you said, he's very personable with people, and uh, yeah, he's a he's a smart, smart guy. So he can do it. And kind of. Uh, getting to the, the closing topics, one thing that I, I also find really interesting that you touched about, about earlier, and maybe I there might be somebody listening, I know for me too, like there's a lot of people that get into boxing at a really young age, right? Sean, nine years old, now he's 21, so he's been around the block, but you know, you, you, you had a little bit of a later start and you had a lot of success um, in boxing, and for anybody listening, is there an age that it's too late to get into boxing or can we all kind of take that advice that, that Aubrey had told you where you just got to work your butt off and, and, and make up? Well, I no, there's no age. I mean, cause I mean, get into boxing for what, you know, the, the goal is going to be different for everybody. Mm-hmm. I would recommend, you know, somebody who's in a, in a in a seniors complex if somebody's coming over willing to hit the pads for you absolutely because i tell you like it's it's just such a uh, you know it releases endorphins is a stress reliever it's just a it's a good feeling you know and to to get that release um as far as you know competitors i've known people getting in the mid 30s late 30s and just you know wanting to have that one fight in the 40s, just wanting to have that one fight. Why not? Why not? You know, as long as you have a good coach who's going to match you up accordingly, make sure everything, you know, you're not feeding you to the dogs. Like, yeah, I mean, even your 50s. Like, I, it's, no. And, and the thing is what people need to understand, and this is kind of, it's, it kind of knocks the stigma away from, from boxing. Like, so you get 100 people. You get 100 people. And maybe five people hundred people go to the box club maybe we'll say less than five percent probably we'll say five percent end up wanting to spar and just try it and then maybe one or two out of them actually want to go and fight so two percent we'll say actually end up having a fight probably less than that so like boxing they don't people say oh they say oh you should go try boxing i don't want to get punched in the face like that's not you know if it i Neither do I, you know, neither do I, but like boxing is for everybody. It's such a good stress reliever. It's such a good for your mental fitness, for your physical fitness. It's one of the best workouts as far as strength, agility, conditioning, and stress reliever. I think it's the best sport in the world. So everybody should be getting into boxing at every age. Uh, I had I had John Olhauser on. I don't know if he's on your radar, but he's the Definitely coach. Yeah. Okay. He started he started later than most. Absolutely. And, and you know what? He's taken it with a stride. He's you know coached some really great fighters at Didn't Crandall he just, University. Yeah, he had announced that uh, the the uh, Bahamas national coach too. Yes. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. It's uh, Bermuda. Bermuda, sorry, yes. Yeah, Bermuda. yeah, yeah. I made the mistake because because I, I was reading the headlines while talking to him. Which, uh, pro tip: don't ever read an article while trying to talk to somebody. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be in Ecuador the the tournament, but uh, for Bermuda with uh, an upcoming um, upcoming uh, guest I, I will have on is Adrian Roach. So I will have him on uh, soon. And he's got the whole story about the fact that he's kind of like uh, Bermuda's um, hope for yeah. for getting some some hardware, some some medals in the next Absolutely. 2024 Olympics. So 
yeah. like storyline wise i mean it's obviously a big story for bermuda but it's also a really big story for new brunswick and and the maritimes john's doing great work down there like that whole crandall university and the boxing team is just i mean they've got some one of the best guys in multiple countries they're training now and, and john's ambitious uh, he's a good guy. He's very good with people. He's great with the with the fighters and uh, just a good good group, good energy down there. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, I really appreciate you coming on here. I know I know uh, schedules and everything like that can be really busy, so I appreciate you giving me some time out of your day. Um, I really look forward to this upcoming fight. Uh, the date is gonna be. Uh, March 19th. Ooh, mark your calendars. Four weeks Saturday, that's right. Four mm-hmm. weeks. Uh, it's going to be in Hamilton, Ontario, going against Antonio Napolitano. I hope I didn't butcher his last name. I think you um, got it. Okay. Um, yeah, so that'd be a, it's going to be a really interesting fight. Um, we got the veteran versus an uh, up-and-comer who's more of a power I puncher. I would say I'm more of a prospect. Okay, okay. You're but a prospect. Time will tell. Yeah, I think you're a prospect. Prospect veteran. Prospect veteran. We'll see. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Thank <laughs> no, you I love, I love the, I love the, com- the, the confidence because at the end of the day, like this is, uh, this is a fight, and you know you're going, you're going to, to battle. So. Absolutely. Can't so, wait. Uh, Looking forward to it. And hey, keep up the really good work with uh, you know the lab, the coach lab. Uh, I think that's really awesome. I think it's 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 helping a lot of people that are in a very you know dire need for for this type of uh, you know fitness and and coaching. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. And and, and good, you're doing you're doing a great job, man. I've seen all your podcasts. Awesome. Oh, I have fan and, alert. Fan alert. Yeah. I, I have. I've been creeping and watching. Any them all. Uh, any advice? Like uh, this doesn't even have to be on air, but like any advice that you're seeing? Um, you know what? Like I'm pretty critical mm-hmm. on things. I I just. But I'll be honest. You ask the right questions. You don't drag on. You got good people. You're doing a good thing, man. Just keep it up. It. Keep doing what you're doing. I you know, and I tell that to you off air because yeah uh, you, you're doing a hell of a job and uh yeah it's uh just keep doing what you're doing well i think i think most fighters fitness category maybe you agree or disagree but you know yes fighters they try to take people's head off but when you get a you know get them outside a box and they're having a beer or something like that everybody's nice guys right good people to get along guys girls good people to get along with. And that's, that's the whole idea about this, this brand is, you know, they're good people, but when they get in the ring, you know, they show those, those parts of themselves that, you know, maybe all that pain that they went through in their life, you know, other things, they get to channel that into something positive, you know, with boxing and, you know, strong focus on mental health. That's something I want to get into more in the future is, uh, maybe Absolutely. starting some type of thing for youth and mental health and yeah, yeah it's much needed in today's world you know yeah. And, uh, yeah and that's it like it's i love it you're doing a good thing man and uh yeah just keep it up all right and tell your pal ruziki uh that I matt will. said, <laughs> matt I, will. said I will for sure yeah. all right I, I, oh oh and the bruiser I, I didn't forget the bruiser too there's two with Riziki, there's we, we, two. We, we we keep the bruiser locked up. He's oh, locked. The, up right oh, he's now. locked up. Okay, cool. Hell, Jack are locked up. All right, all right. And hey, uh, who knows? Maybe I'll see you guys sometime soon at uh, Tribal. You absolutely. know, or see you in Dartmouth sometime. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, best of luck. I know he also has a fight coming up that that uh, day as well. So best of luck to both of you guys. Uh, you guys Thank represent you. us Maritimers really well. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Keep doing your thing, man. All right. Appreciate it. Take care, buddy. And as always, guys, I hope you appreciated this podcast. It certainly was amazing to have Brandon on. I feel like we finally finished our first storyline of the podcast. Um, You know, we had our beginning. We we had the buildup. And now we have the big 
the big guns, Brandon Brewer himself coming on. Uh, it meant a lot to have him on. Of course, we had a really good conversation, touched a lot of different subjects, and of course, uh, more more uh, pressing is is his upcoming fight. He's only four weeks away from that. So I, of course, want to wish him as well as uh, Ryan Rizicki, one of his stable mates, um, the best of luck in their upcoming battle. And uh, yeah, as as Brandon has said, you're, it's never too late to get into boxing. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're in your 20s like me and you want to start boxing and maybe you even wanted to do something competitive, it's never too late. And of course, if you're in your 60s, you haven't started boxing, you're in a senior's home, 70, hopefully you're not in a senior's home when you're in your 60s, but if you're in a senior's home, you know, and you want to get a little bit of activity and you're able and you're capable and you want somebody to, you know, get somebody to get some mitts and start hitting the mitts, right? It's it's really good exercise. It's really good for the mental health, getting uh, all that stress out, especially during these times where you're pressed inside most of the time with these lovely masks that we've all added to our wardrobes. So without further ado, guys, take care. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel on YouTube or on your preferred podcast platform. That way, when we have the new episode out, you won't miss it. You'll be the first one to like, comment, and share. That's how we get the word out. The message is simple, everybody. Be a good person. And all those bad things, you know, you might have some pain in your life. Put it on the bag. Put it towards something that, you know, furthers yourself and your career and and you know, make a passion out of the stuff that you've gone to, right? That's the message, guys. Mental health also is a really important thing. I touched on that uh, in this episode. Um, if you guys are listening to this and you think of some really cool ideas that uh, this brand can get involved with uh, the community and then uh, the local community and then also the global community with respect to youth and and uh, mental health, give me a give me a message. I'm really looking into trying to give back and of course sharing wonderful uh stories from from all my guests that uh lift us up and inspire us so yeah guys that's all for today whatever time you're listening to it and we'll catch you on the flip side take care